You know, one of my favorite things about fishing is the challenge that it presents. From one day to the next, conditions change, and so do the moods of those fish. Changes in weather, air temperature, water temperature, wind, bright and sunny, overcast. There's so many different variables that can change what a fish is thinking and how he's going to react to certain techniques. But with all these different variables and how often and quickly these fish can change their mood, how do you know that you have the right equipment, the right gear, and the right lures? So how do you know you got everything you need for the conditions that today is presenting? I'm going to break it down for you, and I'm going to show you some really innovative tools that Casking has come up with that help keep me organized and prepared for just about any situation. Always be prepared today on Cat This Corner. That's right. You know, anytime you're getting ready to go out on a fishing trip, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to check the conditions. Obviously, the easiest thing is going to be what season is it? Winter, spring, summer, or fall, or the transitions in between. Right now, currently, it's winter time. The fish are going to, going to somewhat be following the typical winter time patterns. And winter time fishing generally means going slow and going finesse which is not really something I do a lot of here in Florida. We get winter, but it's a lot shorter and not quite as cold as the rest of the country. But the fish still do change their moods with the conditions just like anywhere else in the country. When it comes to wintertime fishing, I'm gonna use the same kind of finesse gear that you're gonna use anywhere across the country. I just recently had a trip where I went out fishing a new body of water with new conditions in the middle of wintertime. We're using finesse lures and finesse presentations that I never use. By checking the conditions, I made sure I knew what kind of gear I needed to bring. There is nothing worse than having too much. Whether you're fishing out of a small boat or you're fishing from the bank, you can have too much gear. It'll weigh you down, it's too cumbersome, things get unorganized, things get cluttered, and it makes for a frustrating day. But with that being said, not having that, that right lure or that right presentation at your disposal when it may be the only thing those fish are keying in on. That can also make a very frustrating day. This bait boss bag from Casting is a lifesaver. It can fit so much in here. I customize this to different techniques and presentations. I've got it for my finesse. All my finesse gear is in this bag. Drop shots, Ned rigs, Nico rigs, micro soft plastics like soft plastic jerk baits, crawfish, Texas rigs, whatever it is, any kind of finesse soft plastic presentation I have is all in this one bag, nicely, neatly organized. And it made a world of difference on this day. Thanks to this bait boss bag, it didn't take long for us to for me to figure out what those fish were really keying in on this day, and I had a tremendous day thanks to this. Check this out. This was an amazing day. Tossed myself a little dig. Ted got a first decent one of the day here. Nice one. Finesse fishing in the middle of the winter here in Florida. Oh, he's not ready. Oh, hey, quick release. Another one. <laughs> Love this finesse fishing. That's that swing head jig for you. Beautiful little guy. One? Oh yeah, it is. I thought I was snagged. Best one I've got so far. I see a decent one swimming around. Oh look at this, got him in the bottom jaw again. Beautiful, beautiful. The key is to fish in this river is finesse. This is a swing head jig. Putting it on any kind of like a crawl or a small finesse worm and stuff is, is a great, this is a great way to approach, especially in the current that we're dealing with here. But today we're going to be throwing Ned rigs. We're going to be throwing drop shots. I might even toss a Nico rig or two. Shaky heads really try to work out all the finesse approaches that I hardly ever use. This, go. A little bit better. Still tiny though. Whoa. Oh no. I got crushed as soon as he pulled me into those bushes. 
No, there goes the swing head. So I've had a lot of success today using the swing head jig. Put a little crayfish on there, got a ton of fish off that one. A little worm style, beaver tail kind of bait. Got a bunch of fish that way. Obviously we know that works. And it works well in this condition that I've got go we got going on here. That's pretty much that's exactly what Ted's working right now too. Still catching them. But I actually broke off. I got snagged unfortunately and I broke my little swing head jig off. So it's time to switch up and try something else. See if we can't get anything bigger, because I haven't got anything big yet. Still a ton of fun on this ultralight equipment here. That's what I wanted to show was is this. I got this neat little bait bag here from Casking. It's full of different folders and stuff here. And I've actually loaded this up with all of my finesse gear. There's so many different ways to finesse fish. And I'm not really comfortable or really used to any of them. I don't do a lot of it. So it's nice to have a bag like this that I can organize everything in. See, right now, I don't know what I want to throw. I don't know if I want to go to a Ned rig or if I want to go to a shaky head. Uh, I could do a drop shot. I, I could do a Nico rig. I don't think the drop shot or Nico rig are going to work too well here because we are. there's a lot of weed on the bottom and we're moving pretty fast in this current. We just can't control it. But in my bag here, I've got everything I need for all of them. I got everything I need in this top pocket for Nico rigs. I got the nail weights, I got the, the tool, I got the hooks. I got all my uh, extra hooks over in here for different styles. This is more drop shot stuff. A couple already rigged up med rigs ready to go. But then there's all these different folders. I got tube jigs. I've got Ned rig stuff. I've got drop shot stuff. All neatly organized. Here's all my different crayfish. Here's all the different finesse worms. Here's the odd oddball stuff that I don't even know what category to put them in, but it's got its own folder too. And of course, in the back here's a couple more. I've got a couple paddle tails. Even got some Senkos because you never know. Everything I need, including in the outside pocket here, I've got all my different weights, different weights and jig heads all in here. No matter what what style I want to fish, I've got it all right here organized. Not only is it just easy to access and get to, it's all, it's all there so I can see and go, you know what, let's try this. I haven't tried that yet. Through my little bag of tricks here, I decided to go with the shaky heads this time and a little bit bigger of a, a worm. We've noticed a lot of these, a lot of the bigger bass that we've just seen, it's kind of staging up underneath the cover here. So I'm hoping to get this right next to it and, and let this little thing do its thing in the current and not have to move it too much. Three casts in, I lost that one. I wasn't really digging that worm anyway for some reason. Got one? That's crazy, he just digs right down to the bottom if you let him. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely one of the better ones. The craw, that's what I was killing them on. The luck we're having really has all been on craws. They haven't really related too, too much to the worm, a little bit, but not, not a real consistent bite. But the craw has been very consistent. You know, another thing I can see, I can see schools of minnows down there too. The bass are here for a reason, but there's a ton of bait fish here. <laughs> little tiny guy. When he took that, that topwater fluke, this little silver fluke looks just like those minnows that are swimming around here. That could be what they're foraging on too. Oh, come on, get it. This guy, oh, he got me. He it. <laughs> oh, he's nice. Oh, yeah. Best one I got today by far. Oh, yeah. Beauty. Beautiful fish here, guys. Oh. He can't. Oh, my God. He's strong. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ted, this is a good one. Oh, on this light line, this is such a nice fight. <laughs> Son. Yeah, buddy. Check out that. Check out that pig. <sighs> On that tiny little finesse fluke. My casking players. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> check it out, guys. What a fish. We tried Ned rigs. We tried shaky heads, swing heads, 
Crawfish seem to be the deal, but now it's top water. But again, they won't go for anything too big. Even the giant fish like this want that small finesse little thing. And that's all to do with this clear, clear water. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What a fish. Thank you, my friend. And he's gone. Whew. That was just plain awesome. Just on that little tiny, tiny little fluke. It's better. Oh, dude, it's huge. Oh my god. Oh, no, no. I got to. Oh my god. Ted, this is a big one. Oh. He's running, he's running. Oh. oh, that little fluke, man. Dude, this thing is so strong. Oh my god. Wow, guys, this is incredible. Oh my god, Ted, what is this? A five? Easy five. Easy five. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh, holy crap, Ted. Holy crap. On six pound test line, on a finesse, tiny little fluke. Uh, I just caught a giant. Guys, are you flipping seeing this? Are you kidding me? Wow. I can't believe I caught that on six pound test. 4.7. 4.7. I thought it was bigger than that too. Woo. 4.7 pounds. Six pound test line. Micro finesse fishing at its best, guys. Absolutely unbelievable. All you got to do in the winter, guys, downsize and slow down. I didn't know what to throw. Didn't know if I was going to throw Ned rigs. Didn't know if I was going to throw wacky rigs. Didn't know if I was going to throw drop shots, Nico rigs. But I have that great organization tool of being able to bring everything possible. And you weed through it all until you figure it out. And there it is. Unbelievable, guys. On that tiny little fluke. That's just unbelievable. What an incredible day. There she goes. You know, it's winter time. It's getting cold out here again for Florida. And yeah, the fish slow down. It doesn't mean you can't catch them. It just means you gotta slow down too. I am not a finesse fisherman. I didn't know what to do. So I got this really cool binder here from Cast King. And I brought everything. Every possible finesse style that I can do is here in this binder. And we weeded through a lot of it today to figure it out, but we did. And that's just it. Wintertime bass fishing. Slow it down, downsize it, and you'll have an excellent day too. Guys, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Get yourself some great organizational tools like the Pond Hopper bag or the Bait Boss Tackle bag from Casking. Organize your gear, and I promise you, you're gonna have a much simpler and much more successful day the next time you're on the water. So there you have it, breaking it all down and keeping it simple. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned a little something. If you did, make sure you smash the heck out of that like button and leave a comment for us on anything else you'd like to see us film. We'll do our very best to make a video out of each and every one of those. But most importantly, subscribe to that channel and stay tuned for the very next episode of Captain's Corner on Casking. Keeping it simple, keeping it organized and always be prepared. I'm Captain Mikey, on behalf of Casking, signing out. The future is bright. You keep those lines tight. Nice.